What it do, guys? We got an amazing guest in the building with us today. We have the one and only Riel Downs, who got a movie coming out soon. So we definitely looking forward to this premiering on February 10th on Lifetime, Abducted Off the Street, the Carlisha Gaither story. Yes. Hi. <laughs> nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, great to have you in the studio. So tell me about this. Uh, tell me a little bit about this movie. You know, the audience, they they want to know. They're looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, it's a true story based on a young woman named Carlisha Gaither, who is who I play, and she essentially gets abducted off the street one night. Um, and it's the true story of how she manages to escape within 72 hours, and she's leaving hints along the way. Um kind of finding creative ways to communicate back to people where she is and she ends up getting found, which is really, really wonderful and lucky. Mm, gotcha. And you know what's crazy? So it's crazy because like this, th this came at like an interesting time because yeah. I recently been watching a lot of these movies. How like, have you? A lot yeah, of the like missing yeah, people movies, yeah, right? Yeah. On, on Lifetime and stuff because uh -huh. like I'll just like look at some of them on Hulu during like my lunch break and stuff. Right. And the stories be crazy. They be crazy. Yeah. What are your like, a, how have you felt about them? Like what draws you to them? Yeah, I guess it's just like I mainly watch them to kind of learn like, right. how these people think, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then things to like watch out for mm -hmm. when you out here and stuff. Like mm -hmm. me personally, I don't really think it's even safe to be out by yourself anymore. It's really <laughs> not. It's really not. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Definitely, definitely got to stay safe out there. So talking about this project, right? What can you say really like attracted you to this? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to harp on what you're saying, like I hadn't even thought a lot about these, those type of things and I don't watch a lot of content that like I'm very easily scared so I have never really dived into this world so partly the fact that it was different than what I've done but also just to spread word about it because even to know how much I learned from just reading the script and what she went through I'm like oh how many more people can benefit from knowing how she escaped and the risks of of being outside and like I don't know if it can at least help one person even stay off of the street and and be safe then that's what I aim to do mm. Yeah, for sure. So did you um did you actually have a chance to meet her? Like did you actually know her personally? I didn't. I don't know her personally. Um, but the director and the producers worked very closely with her to get the story correct. So I kind of like referred to them with her, but um yeah, I understand why not, because it's still such a sensitive, you know, yeah. story for her and time of her life. Like I would understand why she wouldn't wanna be be present for that but yeah I never got that like face to face got you okay so like when it because earlier you were talking about like how you're like a scared person right? yeah so how <laughs> was it like did you since you're like a scared person did you find it was easier to play this role like mm -hmm. where you could really portray being scared mm -hmm. I would honestly say so I feel like that's a good way to put it um like just diving into a lot of the material and just doing any sort of thought experiments before the scene of like okay how would I actually feel if I was in a similar situation that kind of like definitely brought me there a lot of the time and playing off of like I had wonderful co-stars so playing off of them and like um, me and the guy who plays the abductor like we're actually he's a great guy in real life you mm -hmm. know and we're friends and everything but like in the scenes he's he's really intense and just kind of leaning into those those moments and playing off of him it was yeah. able to get to a pretty authentic place I feel for me. Um, yeah, that's that good acting right there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is that good yeah, actor, yeah, and it'd be funny because yeah, because when I'd be watching this stuff, I'd be looking. I bet you, I'd be like, I bet you that person like a really nice person. Yes, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it'd be like the most friendliest people because like sometimes meeting some of these people when they come mm -hmm. in the studio, like wow, you're like you're really nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like yeah. you kind of have to be or something. Yeah. Like I remember on the first day. Um, um, he was telling me like his his name is Sam and he was telling mm -hmm. me oh yeah by the way I have like my wife told me to tell you I have a daughter and like <laughs> you know I'm not that guy and I was like okay phew I feel like that yeah. you know brings a level of of comfort there that you're able to like really work and um and get into it with someone you respect mm -hmm. already you know yeah yeah, yeah. so and, and so I actually had a chance to see like a couple of little clips oh, yeah. from it and uh, so what I saw was I saw that you were walking. Mm -hmm. Then there was this person that was like behind you and you were mm -hmm. kind of like looking back, you know, just like seeing what was going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can kind of sense that there's something going on or about to go down or potentially like this person who's looking at you behind you wants to do something. Right. Right. Do you have any advice for girls or I mean, just anybody who mm -hmm. may find themselves in that situation? Mm -hmm. um, I know I thought a lot about this and I feel like. For starters, um, calling someone immediately and just having someone aware of where you are, what exactly is going on, having that witness even, I feel like can often scare someone off. Um, not go like trying our, your best to not 
be walking alone at night as, as difficult as it is it's like you know how do you really avoid these situations but as much as you can maybe uber or have someone with you like having a person with you that's that's there and like this is even reminders for myself you know because i'm like realizing how many situations i put myself in where it's like oh wow maybe in a different situation i wouldn't have been that lucky you know so just trying to make sure people know where you are trying to not be outside alone at night um, and if you ever feel that situation, like calling someone immediately and just going with your gut on that, um, don't worry about, like I often worry about offending someone. No, you can't be worried about that in those yeah. times. You know, you just have to keep yourself safe. Yeah, because it's all about safety, being safe out here in these mm -hmm. streets because pe people crazy. People be, people be crazy. <laughs> yeah, pe people are crazy for sure. And then, so, because I know y'all filmed this in Canada, but like uh -huh. where actually did the story take place? Like, I'm um, in Philadelphia. In Philly, yeah. okay. In Philly. Yeah, which I've never been there. So and Philly is the last place you want to be by yourself. <laughs> I so, guess. <laughs> Have you been? I, I've I've been to Philly. Okay. Yeah, they got. I like their cheesesteaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, those yeah. are good. Yeah, yeah, those are good. If sure. you can handle so, the risks. <laughs> yeah, and then and, and this movie is really significant because um, obviously you're a black woman, and this is mm -hmm. taking place in Black History Month. That's, mm -hmm. that's when it's coming out. So we in Black History Month mm -hmm. now, right? Talk about how important that is. Yeah. Um. I mean, I've said it's really important that this type of story is highlighted all year long but you know people are specifically paying attention this month so i feel like getting it out there at a time where people are looking for content like this to support their eyes are, are on black content like this is the time to put it out there and to get as much viewership as it can um but you know as much as we can perpetuate this like year round and just get sort of attention on the disparity between like how many black people specifically black women go missing and how little news coverage it gets the better because that's it's been a big issue that I feel like a lot of people are not paying attention to mm -hmm. yeah I got it and like so when um speaking of news coverage mm -hmm. during during the film where they're like because I know in some lifetime movies they'll show like the news covering the actual story that happened did that take place in this movie um yeah it did yeah, okay yeah or you know the Wait, sorry. In the movie, like they showed um, the video and stuff on and yeah. So read. like basically in the movie, you have mm -hmm. people playing reporters. Telling oh about yes. The story. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did. Okay. I believe. Yeah. yeah I okay. So. Got you. Oh, interesting. So when it comes to playing these types of roles, right? Mm -hmm. What What do you have to do to prepare yourself? You mm -hmm. know, like when it comes to because I know a lot of times people say like people want to be actors and actresses but they struggle with like memorizing lines right like, like getting getting the feeling and like being in the moment so what right. advice do you have yeah I mean just really repetition is key um for me just going over it as much as I could because I didn't want the lines to be so important in this I wanted to make sure they were in there already so that I could focus on like the emotion and on being in it and I think when you don't have the lines it's easy to to get in your head and just try to remember things so yeah. as much as you can repeat things as much as you can kind of either either imagine yourself in the situation or pull from other places like sometimes um because i hadn't been through anything like this like i had to pull from a different emotional place because wow i really don't know what this type of thing would be like to be honest you know so just finding whatever way you can connect to the material and where you can pull that emotion from going over things reading like i had to read a lot of information about her story and everything so yeah, as much research as you can do. Yeah, research. Okay. So did they have like so they had like past news articles where y'all could like read yeah. just to kind of get a sense of what happened? Yes, exactly. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Nice. So yeah, they had it like they basically had it set up for y'all where y'all could really just dig into the essence, get the feeling, mm -hmm. feel the atmosphere. Okay. Nice. So what was it like cause, so do you live in or you live here? Do you live in Canada or you live here? Um, I live in LA, but okay. go back and forth between Toronto. Okay, nice. So, cause you're that's where you're from, right? Yes. Okay, nice. Oh, so, what is it like yeah. up there? Toronto, it's I've never great. been. Oh, okay, yeah. I like it a lot. It's just, you know, a city, um, very diverse, lots of great food, good vibes. Um, yeah, I love it there. It's like it's it's bustling, it's hustling, you know. So there's always things to do. Um, my whole family is from there, so whenever I go, I get to see family, which is really nice for me. So yeah. Okay, what's the food like? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good question. I feel like. Like, for example, L.A. doesn't have a lot of, like, Indian food or Jamaican food necessarily. Toronto has a lot of really great Indian food in Jamaican places. So I just feel like if you want, like, flavor from just around the world, that's, like, the best place to go to. Really? Mm -hmm. I might have to put that on my list. Definitely my travel do. List. Okay. Definitely do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that that sounds like it'd be an exciting trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so talking about... um. We're talking about Black History Month and this being February and stuff and mm -hmm. this coming out on February 10th. 
what what do you do and what ways do you celebrate the mic and mm. black history? That's a good question. I mean, going to as many black owned restaurants or establishments as I can. Um, I was telling my friend over here about there's a thing in LA called the Black Market. So they do at the um, last Saturday of every month and it's all black vendors and everything. So anywhere I can go to just support support black people, watch black movies. I do with my sister and my mom a lot. Um, and just celebrate. Like honestly, it's our month. Just have a good time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and just and just appreciate it. Soak it in. Yeah. I like that. Do you have a favorite black business? Mm. A favorite is 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 hard, I guess, because <laughs> there's so many. Yeah. Um, I mean, I recently brought bought from this place. This is so random, but this was at the black market. It was called mm. Little Africa, and it okay. just had these really cool, like, it's simple things, but just these really awesome stickers and socks yeah. that I bought. Just like you know, things that mm-hmm. could just make you feel like, yeah, you know, nice. yeah, yeah. That that that's awesome. And I always like this. Um, you know, I love this month, and I think it really just gives us a chance I mean obviously you know we should do a year round but I think it Mm -hmm. really gives us a chance to just kind of reflect Mm -hmm. on the people who've made some really big contributions Mm -hmm. to society and you know our culture and stuff like that is there a specific person that has really stood out to you or inspired you to you know do the work that you do Mm -hmm. that's a great question um I mean there are so many influences I feel like my mom was kind of the first one Mm -hmm. you know and Mm -hmm. she's the one who got my sister and I into acting and so she's been a big role model for me. Of course, they're like the industry hard hitters like, you know, Viola Davis and Lapita Nyong'o that I always look up to and I think are incredible. would love to work with um, Denzel Washington. I love, like, I was talking about this in my last interview, just any creative who kind of is doing, like, has their hand in a lot of different pots, like Pharrell, Childish Gambino, like those type of people. Yeah. Um, I feel like have done a lot for our community and just, like, bringing black people up and uplifting us. So, Yeah. Nice. I like I like that. And you and you talked about your mom, right? Talk about like your parent. I I feel like our parents really have a have a big part in our careers. Like, yeah. We do stuff like you know, for my parents, they really really supported me, pushing me and stuff like that. You talked about your mom, how your mom helped you get into acting and stuff. Mm-hmm. How how important was that to you? Yeah, extremely, extremely, and especially because she had done acting herself. I feel like she knew the ropes, so okay. she got to bring. My sister and I into that, and I had I always had that person to be like, if I had any questions about mm-hmm. what to do here, like I had that guide, which I feel like is something maybe not not a lot of people get to have. And on set as well, as a person who was acting as a child specifically, having someone solid there to look out for you and to, you know, um, to to advocate for you, I think is really important, especially when you're that young, you know. So. Yeah. Okay. And I actually, so I did. A, I'm not sure you might know him. You know Isaac Ryan Brown. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I did an interview with him recently, and he told me that his mom, um, you know, they moved to L.A., and his mm-hmm. mom took off for, like, six months, right? Oh, like, wow. Like, she really made a sacrifice. Did they? Did she make, a, like, sa- those type of sacrifices for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the whole, like, relocation, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, she wanted to go to L.A., so I think it was, like, you know, definitely a happy thing for all of us, but um, sacrificed a lot of time and energy just being a guardian on set for me while I was a kid and, like, going through... Be, you know, doing kids TV and everything. So I will always be indebted for sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And just to, before we close it, I want to ask you about this, right? Because you talked about kids TV. Mm-hmm. Remember watching you in Henry Danger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was uh, what, what was that like being like? Because I know a lot of a lot of young actors dream of either being a Nickelodeon star or a Disney, uh, right. or a Disney Channel star. So <laughs> Fair. you actually lived that Nickelodeon star life. What, right. what was that like to finally get to that point? Yeah, it was so exciting. I mean, it came at a time where I was really wanting something like uh, like like that, you know, of that kind. So I remember be, before that doing more serious roles, which I was appreciating. But I had, had that same curiosity. Like I was like, it'd be fun to do like a comedy or something young. And I've always loved superheroes. So it was like really the perfect timing, perfect mm-hmm. situation. Um, and, you know, getting to go to the things that I watched as a kid, like the KCAs and like all of those type of events. It was a totally new world and it was exciting and fun and um, a lot more. We didn't do it in front of a live studio audience, but we had to do run throughs every week. So that was in front of all the producers and kids would come sometimes and watch us. So um, it was just a lot of energy, a lot of energy around all those years. Yeah, Yeah, I like that. It sounds like a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, (laughs) it is very fun. Very fun. That's pretty (laughs) cool. So we'll appreciate you so much for coming in, talking to us about this. So we'll definitely be looking forward to it. I'll be watching. I'll make sure I'm in front of the TV. Uh Thank (laughs) you. Look at that lifetime. So that movie is coming out February 10th. So we'll definitely be looking forward to that movie. So make sure you guys that are listening, make sure y'all check that out. 
We got Riel Downs in the studio. Appreciate awesome. you so much for coming. And before we go, go ahead and tell everybody besides the movie if there's anything else you got coming up, anything else you're working on. Yeah, um, a lot of things, a lot of things that are in its infancy and that are in progress, but nothing I can fully share yet. So I guess just stay tuned. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be staying tuned in. Yeah, you know, yeah I follow you on Instagram, so yeah, I'm gonna be watching. <laughs> Absolutely, thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. Yeah, of course, we appreciate you coming in, guys. Stay tuned in to the Black Information Network on your home for 24/7 news. I'm Tyreek Wynn.